officers to this meeting of the Democratic Services Committee, which will be held as a hybrid meeting. The meeting is being recorded and will be available via the Council's website to be viewed as soon as, as is practical following the meeting. Everyone participating in the meeting will be accessing the, the meeting either from the Council Chamber or from remote locations. Please could everybody ensure that mobile phones are switched off or to silent mode. Members will, will have received an electronic copy of the agenda. I will ask officers to present a summary of the key points. For the record, the agenda can be viewed on the Council's website. Uh, members and officers will be speaking at various points during the meeting, and those speaking may switch their microphones and wear remote their cameras on at that point. But I would ask that, with the exception of myself as chairperson, at all other times you keep your cameras and microphones switched off, as this will help minimise any background noise and interference and to ensure the connection remains as stable as possible. Um, oh, let me put down a bit. Uh, whether, whether in the chamber or remote, if any members or officers wish to raise a point or question, they should press the hands up icon on the screen hand. Sorry, the screen hand at the top right hand side of the Microsoft Teams window, and I will come to you in order I receive the requests. Uh, please remember to lower your hand once you have finished speaking. Uh, the chat button has been disabled for this meeting. And finally, please do not use your microphone until I invite you to do so. Officers from, <clears throat> excuse me, officers from Democratic Services will be supporting the meeting and will be monitoring the use of microphones throughout the meeting and where necess necessary will mute those not being used. I would also like, I, will, I, I, will, I would also ask the officers to introduce themselves as and when I invite them to speak during the course of the meeting. They too should ensure microphones and cameras are switched off when not in use, please. I will now proceed to agenda business. And the first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. I haven't received any apologies. Rachel, have we, we had any? Yes. Okay, excellent. Um, and now uh, I'll now move on to declarations of interest. Uh, has anyone got any declarations they'd like to um, uh, highlight, please? I don't think we're having any. Good, good, good. Uh, now we'll move next on to item three, approval of the minutes. Uh, has it, hopefully everyone's had an opportunity to read the minutes. Can I have a mover and a seconder for the minutes, please? Move. move. Second, Chair. Oh, thank you. Um, I think I got um, Councillor Graham Walter moving the minutes and Robert James, Councillor James, uh, second in the minutes. So thank you both for that. So we'll move on to uh, agenda item four which is an update on the digital platform and members portal. Um, you present in the report. Oh, sorry, big pun. Um, I'd like to, to um, move to um, Martin Morgans to present the report. Martin, could you like to present the report, please? Thank you, Chair, for the purpose of the recording. My name is Martin Morgans, Head of Partnerships. I'm going to present the report uh, today. So can I take you to 1.0, which is the purpose of the report, is to provide the committee with a background and update for the implementation of the digital platform and the members portal. 3.0 in terms of background, the authority's digital strategy includes three themes, digital citizen, digital council and digital place. The digital council theme focuses on evaluating current business processes and establishing how we can fundamentally change the way of working, redesigning services for better services for the 24 by 7 digital citizen. 3.2, we started the, the the journey back in 2016, where, however, we were provided notice for, um, in 2021 for the existing platform, uh, so we had to look for an alternative platform. So following a, a G Cloud procurement exercise that was conducted, which included demonstration of various solutions, a, a new supplier was chosen, Granicus. In 3.3, in terms of the council portal, it gives a bit of background of the review that was undertaken in 2019 on the previous member referral system. Feedback was obtained through an engagement process involving key stakeholders, inclusive of members, democratic services and officers. The result, it resulted in 17 recommendations, including issues such as the need to review SLA agreements and development of a system to capture key information and requirements for updated member guidelines. 3.3.3, following that procurement of the Granicus platform in 2020, which included a councillor portal, it was decided that the members' referral process would be revisited. 
In 3.3.5, significant work was undertaken by both democratic services and elected members to develop the member referral process within the portal, including redesigning process maps. A pilot group of members was identified to trial to test the new form and process ahead of the system going live prior to local elections in May 2022. So if I can take to the current situation 4.0. It, to date, we have 45,000 users that have created an online account with our digital platform. It's a significant number. 4.1.2, that we have 105 forms available via our digital platform. And since May 2022 to February 2023, there's been 89,589 transactions. And the table in, in below high, represents a variety of forms and services and their numbers of transactions. These have been generated either via the citizens directly through self-service, customer contact on behalf of the citizens and you as members. 4.1.3, when completing an online form, users are provided the option of rating the experience. To date, the council has received 13,218 ratings with the overall average rating of 4.5 to 5, which is quite a successful from that perspective. 4.1.4, it shows um, since 2019, we've seen a significant shift in online channel. So we, our primary channel was the, was voice, but you can see where, where people's decisions in terms of engaging with the council is utilizing that digital channel, albeit I think that's been fast tracked through the, the, the pandemic and the, the, and, the, and the need to engage with the, the, the authority during that difficult time. 4.1.5 and 4.1.6 shows that we are mitigating the potential effects of digital exclusion. That's been key on our on our on our digital strategy, to make as we've maintained all of our channels open, but the digital channel supports our self-service self opportunity for residents to consume from the luxury of their own homes. In 4.2, in terms of the council portal overviews of the role of the portal, ahead of the launch, a number of port, a, num, a new member. Of the head of the launch of the new member portal, all staff within various service areas were trained. That included 177 staff were trained to use the system, and ongoing support has been provided to them as the system continues to develop and as we grow. In terms of a, a position statement, as of May 2022, 2,000 referrals on the legacy system were still unopened and unanswered on the previous system, and they were linked to outgoing uh, councillors. Since, since launching the new member referral portal in May 22, there's been an aggregate total of 4,085 referrals and report is logged on the digital platform by members. Again, members have an opportunity uh, to rate their, their, their feedback on 4.2.4. When completing the online form, members have that option and to date we've had 641 ratings and they re, that we've received from members an overall rating again round of 4.5 to 5. In 4.2.5, it um, identifies the challenges. I, we, we can't avoid this. We have to add some challenges against a backdrop of the unprecedented demand. These challenges have been around response time referrals and poor narratives to the, the reported function. However, development continues to be made to the member portal with regards to the narrative to reported functions alongside the alignment of capacity. So we've seen some additional resource put into, into directories to support the management of referrals and reported. So the, the specific aim is to manage the, the response to the referral rates. As requested by the group leaders, um, a stakeholder group um, will be established following this meeting um, to review and, and develop a program of works to further develop the members portal. There's a commitment from the CMB, including Mark Shepard, the service will continue to be developed and, and so we can leverage the benefits the digital platform offers us. 4.2.6 outlines a successful use case of the digital platform and has enabled the council waste and recycling team to embrace a new way of working by using the new system. Operatives were given tablets to receive all fly tipping litter, abandoned vehicles and other waste issues report. This has led to the team working far more efficiently and they've gone from a paper-based system to a digital system where services are, are delivered via either self-service for the citizens or you as members for the digital platform. 4.2.7 outlines the next steps of development. Development. I, I'll be establishing a review and steering group, as mentioned earlier, that's going to involve um, engagement with the group leaders and, and representatives from across the members. We'll be looking at developing a reporting tool and dashboards to give better visibility for you as members. 
and we also be exploring the feasibility of integration with modern gov to display all committee meters within the portal and also exploring the feasibility of integrating the councillor portal with Microsoft Outlook, your email client. 4.3, it provides citizens feedback on the digital services, and this is from the latest shape in Bridgen's future. And it's overwhelming from the feedback from citizens that they wish to continue to use the digital channel, but also see its development. And that's really positive to see. Sections five, six, and seven cover the effect upon policy framework, the Qualities Act and the Wellbeing Future. And section eight is the financial implications. And that outlines it costs us 63,500 per annum for the digital platform that supports both members and citizens of self-service. So the chair, I'd like to take you to recommendations. And it's recommended the Democratic Service, Services Committee consider the report with regards to the development of the digital platform, including the member portal. Thank you. Yeah, th thank you, uh, Martin. Thank you for the report, and also thank you for your hard work in this. It's uh, very much appreciated. I think it's fair to say that um, initially I was a, I had some concerns, but it, I, I think it's as I was saying to Rachel, you know, it's about change in it really, and embracing that change and getting used to it. And I, I think, yeah, some excellent work has, has gone into this. So thank you very much for that. Um, I think we, we're at a great advantage this committee because we have some. Uh, previous existing members like myself and a couple of others who would have had experience of the old referral system and um, the new referral system we can compare and contrast and also we got some fresh eyes as well so so that should be uh, really in insightful we've got quite a few uh, questions coming up um, before I think we go into the questions I, I was going to ask about customer sorry not customer um, uh, resident um, you know uh, feedback, but that has been already cleared up quite um, sufficiently. Um, I'm quite interested. Um, I think from from my referrals, and I do do quite a few. <laughs> um, a significant number of number of them have been housing related. My ward uh, makes up quite a large percentage of social housing providers, and I just wondered: um, was there any, is there any consideration? I know it's mainly in house services, but is there any consideration? Extending the referral place uh, portal for external partners such as social housing providers, because that would that would I think that would formalise those external referrals. Can I give a chair? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thank you for the question. I think it's uh, an interesting concept. Obviously, in terms of uh, those housing-related referrals. We don't have direct engagement with our RSLs in terms of their uh, complaints procedures, uh, and it's very difficult, so we can't manage that process. But what, I, what, what we have done in terms of the portal integration is, is interface with our shared regular use services. We also have um, the ability to, if there's an identification of pest rodents, that we can use facilitate that first point of contact via the, via the, the form. I think, for, from, from my perspective, I think it's um, we, we're trying from a strategic perspective, CMB and uh, the leadership group in terms of identify the, the issues associated with our RSLs and, and we, we were looking for an open and transparent context, but we can't manage those issues themselves explicitly because we don't have the autonomy, but so having that identification, that roadmap. So aspects such as, you know, if you have any conditions environmental related, whether it's mold, whether it's um, conditions of buildings, I think I, I can just advocate using the shared regulatory services via the portal in terms of that interface. But my, my first protocol is get that complaint lodged with the with the relevant RSLs. So then that gives us the auditory on governance and to put pressure on those those entities. Good stuff. Thank you, uh, Martin. Just before we go to um, questions from from the main um, committee, um, I, I, I think um, I, I'd like to thank pre the members for their engagement with the working group we had to look at our constitution. I think in a similar vein, we should perhaps. Uh, have a working group looking at looking at this, looking at the portal. Um, so that's something that uh, members could consider. And if there's any volunteers, um, that would be great. And then Rachel could coordinate that working group. Before I go into to Mark, uh, Councillor Hughes's question, who was first on my list, could you give me any updates on the dashboard? And also, if there's any plans to try and um, improve the searching of historic uh, referrals as well. That's something I find quite problematic, if I'm honest. Thank you. Just just quickly, as part of one of the uh, recommendations in, in the report, the group leaders have asked to set up a review steering group working group. So I, I will be writing to 
um, the group leaders and looking for nominations. So I really welcome member involvement because you know we, we can't improve the system unless we physically have you there giving us advice and notes. In terms of searching, there's, it's, it is nuanced in terms of, of that and, I, I, and perhaps we can do some a little how-tos in terms of that, but it, it should be, if you go to the advanced search, you can search on, on any form free text within that referral. So I'll pick that up with the team and maybe we can issue out some, some training on that. But again, that's, that's understanding. I, I suspect as we're using our working group, we'll be able to establish some of the, some of the, the conflicts that people are having in terms of uh, productivity. So so hopefully we can pick that up. But you know, searching should be really The issue on the form itself is as the mem ref at the top and everyone tends to put the, the keyword search in there where you need to go to the advanced search and then you can search right through all your referrals. Excellent. Thank you, Martin. And just a, just a little bit of further feedback. Um, thank you to your team as well, because I, I personally have put some recommendations in and they've been implemented. So uh, thank you to that. So pass that on, please. So uh, main questions then. Councillor Martin Hughes, would you like your first on my list? Would you like to uh, ask a question? Yeah, thank you, um, Chair. Could I um, add to your comments as well? Um, whenever I'd, I've had a query or a problem, I've um, referred it to experience and improvement. I've had a speedy uh, resolution. The service is very good, so um, you know I'd like that to be uh, to be noted. I've just got a couple of um, points, Chair. If I can pick them up um, as we go along. Uh, the first one is 422, uh, about the 2,000 referrals that were outstanding in May 2022. Um, could Martin comment on how those referrals have been processed? Because obviously those um, councillors who didn't return in May uh, 2022, um, you know, had, had sort of no continued part in the referrals that they made. I just wonder how they were resolved at the end of the day, if the new members perhaps were uh, passed on those those uh, details of those cases and um, how uh, they would have been sort of resolved. I think the second point then on the working party, and it's a really good move, I think the, uh, the constitution um, exercise that we had over the last summer was quite successful and I'd certainly be prepared to offer my help um, if required on that uh, those working party. If if uh, Martin perhaps could just outline what uh, the composition of the working party would be, that would be quite useful. Was, uh, just a general point uh, as well, Chair, about uh, I think we received an email about response times that um, in a number of cases with subject headings that um, response response times had been extended. Um, the, uh, it was a bit of a fate to complete, I think, because we didn't have a chance really to to discuss those. But what I would ask is that um, you know, obviously, we'd be looking to. Uh, as quick a response as possible whenever referrals are made and um, that, you know, there isn't any un undue delay. I think the figures that were quoted should be maximums and they shouldn't be uh, left, um, you know, to, to, um, for too long. I have picked up from a number of members of the public that uh, there's still uh, some complaints about uh, calls being cut off or hanging on uh, the telephone uh, for a bit too long. If there's a way that we can report those, that would be quite useful. And um, also, um, if there's a way that uh, where referrals haven't been responded to in due time, if there's um, a mechanism that we could introduce to uh, to, to make sure that they have followed up. So I'm sorry to take your time, Chair, but uh, they were the main points they wanted to raise in that report. That's great. Thank you, uh, Councillor Hughes. Um, quite a few good points there. And I also welcome your um, volunteering for the proposed work, working group as well. Martin, are you okay to help with some of those points that yeah. Councillor Hughes made, please? Thank you, Councillor Hughes, in terms of uh, those questions. In terms of the 2,000 referrals, I think it's a, a throwback of, of, of referrals that were open for quite significant time. We saw you know, the duration, et cetera. Um, 
some way over a year in terms of uh, open time. So we, we had to draw a line in the sand, uh, unfortunately, Council of Hughes, and we, and we just closed them down as at that point in time, and then moved the system forward um, onto the new one. So unfortunately, at that, you know, we, there was no ownership in terms of who would own those referrals or any ability to transition those referrals across anyway. So it, it, it's a tough one, but this is where we want, need to be in from a position statement going forward in terms of um, that responsiveness and I'll pick up the response times in the next one. So that, that covers off the, the 2000. In terms of um, a combination, the, the, the makeup of the working group, I'm going to be writing to the, all the group leaders because it's been a request by a Mark Shepherd to set up the working group. So that combination will be in, as a mandate for themselves and, and their prerogative in terms of who wants it. I, I guess willing volunteers will, will gladly be accepted. Uh, but it's about us how we move the platform forward and supporting you as members uh, and councillors in terms of delivering you um, an efficient um, working model. Um, in terms of the response times, we, we, we did a blanket SLA initially in terms of the pressure point of um, actually getting the system live for, for May 22. And it was a 10-day SLA. And, and this has caused some significant issues for services in specific areas where we have got contention anyway. So we try to work with service areas to give a realistic response time within the current workload and, and the unprecedented demand that's been driven um, in terms of referrals and members um, reporters alongside those citizens reporters as well because you know by providing self-service people are engaging with the platform and generating work as each transaction is a piece of work so we're trying to deliver a realistic within a relevant SLA's times but you know accept the point that we, we, we don't want to go to the the end point of that SLA we want to try and deliver the service but it's, it's up to the services in terms of determining their ability to deliver that against that. Um, I'll just pick up quickly on the I'll jump back to the, you talked about um, reporting in terms of where SLAs are missing, missing etc. That's something I'm, we're currently working on as part of the, the, the um, recommendations. We're looking at a dashboard and reporting tool, but this is to really to facilitate not just members, but CMB as well, so they can take ownership of the referrals, so they allow visibility of what referrals are in terms of the SLA, if they're exceeding, etc. So then we can apply the necessary um, uh, pressure, etc., to get those through the system. So it's not quite there yet, but it's one of the, our next um, directions of travel following the stabilisation of the platform. But yes, it's, it's, it's on our roadmap to give us that granularity in terms of where we are, and then also understand where where the demands are through through the themes of of of, of the year in terms of where we could prioritise uh, capacity, etc., going forward. So what, what, what's, what's been delivered from the digital platform at the moment is that insight, that data an analytics to allow us to understand, well, what, what is it, where is the need and what, where do we need to put the relevant capacity? i just come back then to the, the calls being cut off. In terms of our customer contact, 643, 643, there's, there's no cut off unless we've had um, a performance related issue with, with, with the line etc or huge we, we did have some problems during the winter fuel and welsh um, grants in terms of the capacity and the number of people calling but we worked through those so you should be no cut off from that from that point and we are doing some work in the back end to, to shear up that and give some capacity in terms of of routes into the, the 643 number, albeit there's always going to be contention if you've got 2,000 people call up on the same day, we're going to have some trouble. So it's about how we mitigate that and manage our workload engagement with the citizens. So I hope I picked up your points there, Councillor Hughes. Great. Thank, thank you, uh, Martin, and thank you, Councillor Hughes, for your question. And Stan, Rachel, you've got a point you want to make quickly? Sorry, just in response as well, Councillor Hughes. Um, uh, in terms of the 2000 as well, what we actually did was, unfortunately, obviously, with previous councillors' um, accounts, if they weren't re-elected, we did obviously have to delete all those referrals. However, if there were referrals that were, say, urgent for social services or anything on the previous system um, back last May, um, if there were social services or if there was something that really did need picking up, then we did make sure that we passed it to the officer. Um, again, if it, because of GDPR issues, etc., we couldn't pass it on to other councillors, but we did make sure that, that the service area was passed it and, and um, took on the responsibility then of that referral, and we chased that up. Um, for returning members, those were kept open, and then they were gradually worked through, um, and then the team were gradually closing them off, obviously. But, uh, yeah, they didn't just get deleted in the end. We did try and, and within the, the member support team, try and make sure that where we could, particularly for the vital ones, they were followed up. Thanks. Good. Thank you for that, Rachel. That's uh, fair enough. Um, Councillor Graham Walter, please. 
Uh, good morning, Chair. Thank you. Um, a number of observations and uh, one question, if I may. Um, I think there are many, many positives to take from um, the system that uh, we have now. I, I'm new to it and I think we should recognise those positives. For me, being a, a new uh, member to, to the authority, I wasn't used to anything else, so I found it perhaps easier uh, to work with um, um, re returning members. Um, and I would also echo the comments about the quality of service and support um, that members have had um, when there have been some issues, particularly in the early days. Um, it's been good to see the gradual uh, developments and improvements um, you know, on a month by month basis. So again, I think that's a positive. Um, I think the report it function um, is a very, very helpful tool for members. Um, those members who are perhaps not precious about racking up hundreds of referrals on a league table, because you can use it to um, ask uh, and, 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 and go back to residents and say, have you have you used the report it? And, you know, one, one does that at PAC meetings and other um, other public facing events. And actually, um, the feedback I've had is that residents like using the report it system. They feel quite empowered that they are able to go on and, um, you know, report a, a street light or whatever it might be. Um, so I'll get to my question in a second. My question um, would be around how the authority can do more to promote the fact that residents can actually take um, ownership and um, some control and responsibility for the things that they see, um, especially those who perhaps you know don't feel as though they want to uh, contact their councillor, but they want to they want to get on and do it themselves. Um, and so that, that's the question, really, if we can do more to, to promote the report it function. And finally, I would echo uh, Martin's point. I'd be, I, I felt that the working group that we had for the constitution was really valuable. It was time consuming, but it was really valuable. And I was pleased to be a part of that. And I would um, certainly be willing to take part in any uh, working group around, around this area. So thanks for bearing with me there, Chair. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Councillor Walter, and thank you for your support as well. Um, yeah, good points about uh, empowering citizens as well. I wholly agree with that as well. And the report it function that is progressing well as well. Um, just a little side point before Martin comes in. It's good to see that you can now copy in members for the report it function as well, because we don't want to, particularly members like myself in multi-member wards, which is most of us these days, isn't it? apart from a few exceptions. Um, we don't want to duplicate the work between members as well. So that's a good example. That's another good example building on uh, Councillor Walters points. But could you raise? Uh, so have you got any comments about Councillor Walters points about raising the uh, reported function for citizens, please? Thank you for the question, Councillor. Really important. I think if we reflect back on 4.1.2 in terms of the table, that we we have 105 forms available, and and since May 22, we've had 89,509 transactions. I think what the digital platform has delivered us is ability to deliver services and uh, functions to, to the citizens that we couldn't have dealt with during the COVID pandemic. So if you look at the Welsh Government Fuel Support Scheme, cost of living allowances, 17 and 15,000 uh, transactions respectively. Um, it's, it's been really important for us to uh, to provide that self service, and then you can when you scroll down the table, you've got pest control, uh, fly tipping, um, and uh, applications for school, etc. So what we what we do in the process in terms of developing the forms, uh, councillor, is to understand how we can make the the back office more efficient. So the case study where we've outlined the the waste disposal team is that we basically went from a, a paper based system where they didn't get their instructions, et cetera, from, uh, by a digital means. We, we facilitated a process in there. We gave them technology. And then from that perspective, a citizen or yourself as a member can then log that call via a form. That form then directly sends that, that transaction to the operator's work uh, device where they're scheduled in, and then they can complete that work. And then the response back, the work has been completed. So this is a whole holistic journey of, of business process review we need to do. So alongside the form, it's a lot of back-end work, business analyst work that's required to, to facilitate because we want to try and grow capacity within our teams to facilitate the, the demand that we have on the services across the directorate. So in terms of the 
the, 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 com the communications and that's out there. We, we, we do publish on our uh, digital channels, etc., in terms of what's available, but I'll take that away and see if we can reprofile because, you know, as from the, the, the consultation, the citizens' desire is there to, to actually transact with us from a digital perspective, albeit, you know, conscious that we don't want to exclude citizens and, and we maintain those other channels to enable those citizens to engage us as well so there's no, no level of digital exclusion. Thank you. Um, thank you. If I may, Chair, um, wh whether it would be worthwhile trying to um, put a very small uh, flyer in with the um, council tax demands when they go out that says this is how you can um, use the report it function, for example, just a thought. Thanks, Chair. Yes, it's an excellent idea, actually. Um, Rachel, could you put that as a recommendation, actually? Um, thank you, uh, Councillor Walter. That's a great, great suggestion. Uh, Councillor James, please, you're next on my list. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, some of the questions. Uh, firstly, Martin, thank you very much for this report. Very comprehensive, a very interesting report. How we move in where we are in the digital age, all right? But my question, it's, and uh, it's about the telephones, all right? Um, it's, people are still having very, a lot of difficulties in trying to get through on the 64643 line. I'm sure you are aware of this. And is there anything being done? Can you do something to improve the system? All right. That's my first question. The second question is you it's on 4.25, which you've touched on. It's a group is soon to be established, and I've written down when and who. So I think you've touched on that. My main question was about the telephone line. There's still a, a tremendous amount of people using it, Martin, and they're having trouble getting through. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor James. Yeah, uh, Martin, can you? address that question can i address the second question first and i'm going to just pull up some some figures so i can respond to the first bit so um in terms of the working group i'll as i said i'll be writing out directly after the democratic service to the group leaders and hopefully get this set up uh, i know mark shep is really keen to get this moving so council james will uh, I'll, I'll be doing that you know early early next week uh, for sure and then hopefully we can set the working group up so if you just give us two minutes i'll just pull some figures here to help me respond to the the telephone question So, so, sorry, um, uh, Martin, we're, we're quite happy to do it from this committee, the, the, the working group, yep. Oh, right, I, oh, from my, okay, that, that I'm happy to do a working group, I, I need to have a mandate from group leaders to set up a steering group uh, via Mark Shepherd. so, uh, you know, I need to, i got to commit to that, and that's why it's in the report, so, but, you know, happy that this group to be part of that as well, you know what I mean, so that's the mandate okay. that's come yeah. up from, from Mark. Yeah, we could combine it, yep, yeah. grand. Sorry, Councillor James, I had to get some um, some figures here so I can respond to you uh, um, with, with some some evidence. So we, we are obviously you know, been tracking our customer contact in terms of te te telephony um, for some time. It's something I'm working with Mark Shepard on. What are the next steps in terms of how we can deliver a uh, service? So it, uh, to put put in into context that we have uh, 21 officers um, available um, in terms of uh, customer contact. Um, and then if I look on, on, a, on a weekly basis, we have only nine offers physically actually responding um, to telephone calls. We have a number of people based in Civic. Uh, we have a number of people training. In terms of customer contact, as you can think, our, our desire as an organization is not to be a, a telephone switchboard. We want to deliver a first point of resolution at that first point of contact. So that's our key driver. So significant training is involved in terms of a customer contact agents. We, we're looking at possibly six months of um, of training to get them to a point where we can facilitate and support citizens at that first point of resolution because we don't want to be a uh, harbour mastering or, or ping pong uh, phones into other directors if we can respond as and then we've obviously seen some some difficult situations in terms of um, grant forms requiring significant filling in and and so at that first point of contact our agents have been supporting those citizens through those processes which does take a, a significant time so if i can re reflect back on, on from the third of the second 23 to the ninth of the second 23 we handled 2269 calls with nine operatives um, um using those those phones so you know average calls day was 500 was 454 and if I take you to the average call to ha handling time, we've, we, can, we can see our average call handling time is eight minutes and 39 minutes. 
and with our maximum call handling time, one hour and 29 minutes. So I think it just shows the, the, the variety of types of calls and engagement we are having with citizens, which is causing um, elongation in terms of, of queuing, et cetera. But that's how, how we mitigate that is about, you know, providing uh, more cha eloquent channels via the digital to mitigate you having to call. But, you know, as I said earlier, it's about not excluding people. So, but when, when a citizen does contact, it's about delivering that, that point of resolution as that point and that's, that's testimony in terms of the, the call, average call handling going from 8.39 minutes to one hour and 29. So, so there, I've had a customer condol agent sitting on the phone, taking a, a citizen through their problem for an hour and a half. So I think that gives you some context of some of the complexity that our agents are calling in terms of why we have queue length. Thank, thanks, Martin. And uh, Councillor James, would you could you just lower your hand? That'd be really useful if you could, just to, for my records. Thank you. And thank you for your question. And finally, we got Councillor Paula Ford, if you'd like to ask a question, please. Good morning. Um, sorry, I, my camera's not working, and if I start coughing in the middle, I've got on selector, so on. Um, thank you again for a very comprehensive report. Um, I've got a, a couple of questions that I'd just like to go through. Um, on 3.3, .3, what were the 17 recommendations and who agreed the timescales for the service level agreements? Um, on 4.21, has the training worked for the staff and do they understand um, the way the system works? And finally, on 4.2, if someone reports it in the wrong bit of the system, what happens? How does a member know that it's been uh, just closed with no response? Um, and, and it's not a question, but I would just like to point out that I actually phoned in to the department last week and was on the phone for 20 minutes and did get cut off. But uh, anyway, thank you. Those are my questions. Yeah, thank you, uh, Councillor Ford. Uh, Martin, could you help with them, please? Thank you, Councillor Ford. Can I, I know what department you phoned through? Is that, is that all right? Or should we, can we take it offline? Just uh, just understand your... Um, the yeah, it was... Um, I was in a, a council... Dealing with a, a council tax issue for a... Uh, one of my residents and um, I'd been on the phone for 20 minutes waiting to be answered and then it just got cut off. All right, uh, I'm happy to take that offline and, and, and do a, uh, a work through on that if you if you don't mind, Councillor. Is, is that right if I can contact you outside and we can just uh, track that through? Yes, certainly. Thank you, thank you. Um, in terms of 3.17, in terms of the 70 recommendations, I haven't got them at hand. I'm afraid it was it was it was, it was work done pre pre my involvement. But what I can do is I can pull that out and uh, I can uh, give that to Rachel to to offer around. It was the group itself was was include democratic services and existing members as at that point in time. So it was a member portal system or a member referral system to support them. So um, I will have to do some homework on that and get that to you. In terms of training, it's sort of linked to 4.2 as well. So what 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 we we've done and, and you know we continue to do is offer training um, for councillors and quite open to have open sessions in terms of supporting things like you know improving the way you search etc. But it's the key thing is about the officers. So the, the issue you raise, if you do report it to the wrong area, it goes to the wrong referral. It's about that triaging aspect where the officers then move it to the right area because they might know the business a little bit better. So the advantage of the portal system is you don't really have to understand that all the nuances of the 280 service we deliver you can put it somewhere but the expectation is the ownership then is with the officer that receives it and it may be received incorrectly for no for no, no wrong reason other than that um that they move it to the right service area so all referrals um will only be closed down um mem refs in terms of when they've been passed back to you with a message and you're either closed by the member themselves or after a three week timeline has been sitting in your in your queue um, report is a slightly different. Um, that's more of a, a, a point and, and hit to the to the right area because it's more specific, say street lighting, uh, um, fly tip and etc. So I, I wouldn't expect that to go to the wrong area. But again, even if it was slightly incorrect, that the service area should pick it up. But it, that's where the continual training and in the service areas is about taking that ownership of making sure if a referral does go into the wrong area, it's, it's moved to the right area. So you can be sure we continue the training there, but as with everything, it's new for the officers as well as, as you as members. 
Great. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, th th thank you, uh, Martin. Thank you, Councillor Ford, as well. Um, actually, I I've had a similar experience, but I think we'll take offline, uh, Martin, that's OK. So different, it relates to a different service level. I think I was on the phone for a similar time and got cut off. Uh, mind you, don't, uh, to put it into perspective, I was on the phone for an hour and a half with a, for a, a benefit query for a constituent with the Department for Work and Pensions telephone line, which is not good at all. But uh, so that puts it into perspective, and we we appreciate the challenges with hybrid working and the like as well. But we'll we'll have a chat about that later on. I don't have any more questions. Please, if anyone does have a burning desire to ask a question, now is the time. Um, so I think as a way going forward, Martin, you've said that you that Mark, Mark Shepherd has asked you to formulate a working group from group leaders. And Rachel said that you're quite keen to have a working group from this committee. So I think if we amalgamate the two, if that if that's OK with you. Um, so from my list, I've, see, I've seen I've had volunteers from Councillor Martin Hughes, Councillor Graham Walter. I'm happy to throw my hat in the ring as well. Um, oh, look, we've got Councillor Ian. Sp is that a question, Councillor Spiller, or is that vol volunteering? Or... Councillor Spiller? Um, uh, Chair, thank you very much. Um, it was uh, it was actually volunteering, um, just echoing the points uh, really of my colleagues. Uh, I very much enjoyed being part of the working group uh, with regards to the constitution. I felt that we um, had some very positive impacts on that and are happy to uh, volunteer again. Marvellous. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spiller. Have you, you going to say something? We're going to say something, Martin. Did you want to? I, I'm comfortable with that. Uh, I'll take that, you know, to Mark and, and really appreciate the support because we, we're not going to make the, this it's your system or your portal. So it's about uh, delivering a service that, that meets your needs as well. So really comfortable. Hence, we wanted the steering group. So working with Democratic Services is fantastic. Thank you. Well, thank you. Uh, and I think so. I think with the four of us, along with group leaders, that should that should suffice, really. So um, that's great. Um, so. Yeah, so I'm, I'm now going to allow Rachel to um, go for the recommendations and we'll just see if we agree on them and take that forward. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, so I just picked up in terms of some um, points maybe that you wish to consider. Um, so there was a recommendation that you wanted to look into a possible flyer for um, to go in with the council tax to promote the, um, the reported system. Um, then, as I said, as we, the Chair's just mentioned about the working group, so if you want, we can look. Um, I can work with Martin and... Uh, and then we can try and put this group together and see how we can facilitate this. And then there were areas such as, you know, I'm just think, picking up a few items, maybe the committee wishes to explore under that, um, such as um, about maybe engaging staff and seeking their views. That might be quite useful for the working group. Um, and also I'll get the 17 recommendations as uh, Martin's offered and I'll send that to members. Were there any other recommendations that members wish to make? I, I, on the portal? I've, just, I've just thought of something actually, if I may, um, Martin might be able to help this. And I, I've obviously never looked at this from a, a residence or a citizen's perspective, but if any residents wanted to um, articulate their views in the medium of Welsh, is there a sufficient facility to do so? In terms of our Welsh language standards, we would have, if we that they, they require that we could facilitate that. So you know, as as with all things, we, we don't want to, we want to ensure whether we got the medium and Welsh available uh, chair. So yes, if we needed to, yes, would be the response. That's great, thank you, Martin. Um, so um, everyone happy with those recommendations? Just a, I don't. Yeah, move the recommendation, chair. Thank you, Councillor Granville. Is that you proposing or a question? Can I just ask a quick question of Martin? Because um, I used the facility last week, uh, and to be fair, it, it, it's working. Um, will ordinary ICT uh, people within the authority also be able to access this, Martin, and give us advice? I, you know, if we've got a problem with it, we can phone them and they can come out or we meet them in the office to deal with issues? Thank you, Councillor Granville, in terms of question. I think uh, everyone's mentioned how, how uh, positive the experience and improvement team as uh, if it's specifically portal focused, can I can I advise that we will engage with um, the experience improvement team in terms of understanding how you can navigate uh, search, et cetera, and, and the interaction around the referrals. If it's specifically ICT in terms of if your laptop's not working, that's definitely the number you need to call from that, that context. But 
you know, can I ask that we, we channel any queries around the portal in, via that team so we can capture then what the challenges are? Because if one, one councillor is experiencing a, a problem or an issue, it means others are as well. So we can, we can grab that. That's the quickest route, I think, for a resolution on that. I'm happy to offer as well if we want to have drop in sessions on a monthly basis, so you could the experience and improvement team will be available, they can come in, or if we have to do it on a. You, the, the door's always open, so if anyone's got any experience or uh, any issues, we, we, we're happy to arrange via Phil O'Brien uh, and his team to, to have that quick sit-down access. That, that's if you, know, if you, you desire, wish to desire. Thank you, Chair, for that answer. Thanks, Councillor Granville. Uh, I understand Rachel wants to come in on a quick point as well. Thank you, Chair. And just building on what Martin said, I know um, the member support team is also very, very keen um, in terms of obviously assisting members with the portal where they can. So if it's in terms of where to direct it, maybe, um, you know, knowledge of, of which service area, maybe to direct it, something like that, they're quite happy to support as well. So as I said, you, as Martin said, you've got the experience team and you've got the member support team, so they're more than willing to assist members. Great. Thank you, Rachel. Um, so just to summarise really or, or finalise this, if there's any members who have any training needs, please let us know now really. Uh, I guess you could email in to Rachel uh, alternatively. So that's an option. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you to Martin and all members then. I think we'll draw that item to a close and move on to the, the next agenda item, which is the revised corporate report template, which I believe Rachel, you're going to take us through. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yes, if I just go on to the report. Um, so yes, if I can take members then to agenda item five, the revised corporate template. The purpose of the report is to present the proposed revised corporate template for reports that are presented to Council Cabinet and their committees. Um, the template is designed to contain the key elements that will aid decision makers in assessing the available information and to make informed decisions. A desktop review has actually been undertaken of the current corporate template and uh, due to the requests really for consideration of the socio-economic duty, Welsh language implications, links to climate change and safeguarding, as well as an, uh, a request for an executive summary um, so that the reader can, and decision maker can quickly acquaint themselves with the content of the report. Um, the, the corporate template has been considered by CMB, Corporate Management Board and group leaders and been discussed and they were quite happy with um, the template as it stands. A blank version is attached to Appendix A for you to consider, and also then we've used a recent Cabinet report to populate an example, so you could see how it looks like, and that's attached to Appendix B. Um, to summarise, as I said, about, apart from the changes, the additions, as I said, of the Welsh language, socio-economic duty and climate change and safeguarding, um, there is also a few changes you'll notice. They've com it's the combined combination of the connection to the corporate wellbeing objectives with the wellbeing of future generations implications, because they are quite interlinked. So interlinks um, where we're looking at the act and the implications and also within our own objectives. The relocation then of the effect on policy framework and procedures rules to the top of the report and the relocation of the report owner, corporate director, and responsible officer to the top as well. Um, is proposed the revised template then is, is presented to committees from the 18th of May. However, it's presented to you today for your consideration and any comments, please. Great. Thank you, Rachel. I, th I think I'm fairly content with it, actually. Um, I think you've, you you hit each of the various important acts of legislation and acts of, you know, the uh, Equalities Act, for example. Um, do, you, do you think there's any, I mean, we do summarise it in the, um, the what do you call it, the, um, Oh, the the oh, um, the corporate priorities. Is there any other internal uh, documents this could be linked to? Do you think that that could be pertinent? Um, I think the plan really is to try and uh, you know link it all in. So in terms of the corporate plan and the corporate priorities, they're linking in with the self assessment. Um, so it's really I think officers are working to get and the well-being of future generations. So officers are working to get it all in one area in terms of performance monitoring. So that's where we're trying to get the report then the report template to con consider that and to look at that. So I don't think there's anything else necessarily that would uh, would be needed there. Chair. Thanks. Great. I'm pretty happy with that then. And um, yeah, this has obviously been fed into group leaders as well. But do anyone have, does anyone in the committee have any questions? Not seeing any questions, I'm taking that you're all 
relatively happy with this one. One, two, three. No, good. Right. I think we'll we'll move on from that one then. Thank you ever so much. And we'll go to the final uh, part of the agenda, which is the forward work pro uh, program. Rachel, again, would you like to to summarise this, please? Thank you, Chair. Yes, if I can take you then to the report. Um, what I've tried to do is try to present to the committee then um, a draft forward work program, which is attached to Appendix A. Um, you can see it in the background there the remit, as I said, and in the constitution um, and under the local government Wales measure 2011, the remit of this committee. So summarised at 3.2 then, to review the adequacy of provision of staff accommodation and other resources to discharge democratic services function, to make reports and recommendations to council at least annually in relation to such provision, at the request the council review any matter relevant support and advice available to members of the council and the terms and conditions of offices office of those members and to make reports and recommendations to council following a review. Um, as I said, there is further information then taken from the constitution in relation to the role of the Democratic Services Committee um, and they are summarised then A to F. So really I, what I've tried to do with the uh, forward work programme attached to the Appendix A is try to just put in the statutory things that really need to come to this committee on an annual basis. So we've got the Democratic Services Committee annual report, which will be coming um, shortly in the next meeting. Um, you usually, as a committee, review the member development programme almost once, twice a year. So I factored that in. There's the council's annual report, which I will be um, taking to this committee for information, really, to um, inform particularly new members of the, the facility for you to make an individual annual report and get that published. Um, and that will follow also the member performance development review process, it all interlinks. Then in October, um, it is standard for the Independent Remuneration Panel Wales draft report to come to this committee for comments, which you had in October last year, over November. Um, and then obviously again, a member development update again in February. If there is anything else at the moment that you think could be added within the remit of this committee, um, we can add that in. And obviously throughout the year, this, as the report states, this is flexible forward work programme. So if there's consultation, um, Welsh Government consultation items that come through that would be pertinent to this committee, you can also consider those, for example. Um, and I know for uh, at the moment we are waiting um, for the Local Government Elections Act Wales, the final guidance to be published. So it might be worthwhile you considering that and then how the authority has kind of met with all the um, legislation under that. But as I said, I haven't factored that in because I'm not sure the timing of that yet. We were expecting it already to be published, but it hasn't been as yet. But um, that would be something I would suggest to you that you consider um, at one of your future meetings. But uh, it's really your forward work programme for you to consider what you'd like to add, please. Great. Thank you, Rachel. Um, just to clarify then, um, with the with regard to electoral reform, um, do you know if the government, I'm assuming, but the Welsh government, are they going to consult on changes? Are they going to go through a green or white paper? Do you know? And in terms of the electoral reform, as I said, I think they, the paper has gone out. We went up for consultation earlier this year. Unfortunately, we couldn't have it to the committee because the timing didn't fit. Um, but again, in terms of any final published guidance, it might be worthwhile you considering that as well. Um, but as I said, the guidance now coming out will be in relation to the whole of the Local Government Elections Act. So hopefully that will be a really nice piece of information, um, a nice report for the committee to consider. Great, thank you. Um, just, to, just to highlight as well, Rachel and I had a quick conversation before the start of this meeting and just, just uh, informed her that a, a member had has written to me uh, regarding conduct at meetings, not in relation to us, uh, and that followed an incident in, I think, one of the North Wales local authorities, whereby one elected member actually voted whilst in possession of a vehicle. And um, the, the proposal was that perhaps we should have some, um, well, have have some uh, standards as part of our standing orders. But Rachel's recommended actually that we, we could develop um, sort of like a good practice protocol um, so perhaps we could we could look at that, Rachel, in, in due course. That would be quite useful. Um, but I do also have questions from uh, Councillor Walter and Councillor Hughes in order. Uh, Councillor Walter, you were first. So, um, yeah, please take the floor. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Rachel. Um, the first one is just being a bit pedantic. Um, the bottom row, should that read 8th of February 2024 rather than 23? Um, and... Uh, and the second one um, is, um, you'll forgive me, a newbie question. 
Um, we we carried out some work on um, the review of the constitution. Is that does that happen annually or does it happen every term, i.e., every five years? Um, and just trying to sound out whether members or you chair uh, feel that um, we should uh, we should do that on an annual basis, and if so, to put it in the forward work program. Um, I'm easy either way. Thank you. Um, yeah, Rachel, would you like to come in on that one? Yeah. Yes, thank you, Chair. Thank you for the uh, February 2023-24. Uh, I will amend that. <laughs> Sorry, that's my mistake. Um, in relation to the Constitution, the, it's not usually an annual thing, um, simply because it was brought to this committee and it was reviewed because the new model came out um, and then it was it, the new model came out across Wales. So that was why it, we, we changed it all completely. There are changes made on occasion where needed um, here or there to the constitution on a regular basis. I'd say throughout um, every year, really. Um, however, it's not set in stone. But if you wish to look at this, I know, for example, there have been some queries about some clarification needed on the uh, new constitution. Um, and I know the monitoring officer is looking to meet with um, group leaders and some other members to discuss this and to clarify those aspects so we can do that. But if you as a committee wish to, to look at this on an annual, there's nothing stopping you um, in terms of considering um, the constitution and whether you'd like to have it as an annual report. Yeah, thank you, uh, Rachel. That's, that was kind of my uh, recommendation as well, really. Let's, let's, let's see how it beds in, really. And, uh, you know, if, it, if it's not broke, don't fix it sort of thing. But, you know, if, if it is proven inadequate, I'd be as chair, I'd be very happy to re revisit that work. Um, so let's let's take it like let's take it as that, shall we? And um, always happy to be emailed on on, on this. So um, please feel free to write to me if you think we do need to relook at this. But yeah, thank you for your question. And that's something we'll 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 keep an eye on, I think, as members. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, yeah, Councillor Hughes, you've got a question as well. Yeah, thanks, Jay. It, it was on exactly the same point, actually. Um, I, I think there's certain lessons I've been learned doing uh, recent months, um, and some some items that uh, maybe we should, we should have included in the constitution uh, need to be looked at. I think my sort of one issue that's come up is the duration of meetings, for example, and I've looked at other authorities and seen that there are some clauses which which address that. So I'd certainly welcome a, a review. I think um, we, we, we would certainly benefit from that if we had that maybe in October. Um, my other observation then is about um, sort of electoral reform in general, but um, there is an issue of the UK government introducing for certain elections the requirement that voters show ID in order to uh, be able to cast votes. And, you know, there's a number of uh, serious implications about that, isn't there? I think, again, if that's something that we can uh, bring in to see how we as an authority can try to address the, uh, the issues that, that will arise because of that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Hughes. I mean, firstly, I mean, but going back to your comments about um, the re the review we did, the working group, um, we we made some quite fundamental changes, specifically in relation to questions for members. Um, I, I, that that's working adequately at the moment. But um, you know, if, if there was any shortfalls of that, again, as as I said with Councillor Walter, be happy to to look at that again. But let's let's just see how it beds in for the time being. The second point about uh, the UK government proposals, I share your concerns with this, and perhaps there is a role for this committee to um, to, to to promote and, and highlight these changes so our citizens are aware of the changes. So yeah, I agree with that. So um, perhaps we'll, we'll have to wait and see what the guidelines are from the UK government and what forms of um, um, uh, um, documentation will be required. But yeah, thank you for your comment. I think that, that should be noted. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Spiller, please. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I'm just really picking up the points of uh, both of the previous councillors. Um, we, we undertook quite a significant review of the constitution. Um, however, I I do also tend to agree um, that that should be scheduled for a further review in October. Um, where we can look to see what lessons have been learnt from what we've what we've changed, 
um, and really to understand if there are anything, uh, you know, after after living with it for a, for a period of time, whether there's whether there are perhaps some tweaks that we can make to make it run more effectively. Um, certainly, there are a few examples I can think of um, where I would uh, I would like to make a couple of tweaks um, and I'm sure by October other members will have similar thoughts as well. Um, so maybe uh, maybe chair that's something that could be diarised into our forward work programme um, and if it's deemed not necessary closer to the time then we can always shelve it um, but uh, but certainly I can see some uh, I can see some opportunity there to uh, to have that scheduled. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you, uh, Councillor Spiller. I agree um, that I think October would be sufficient time to allow the, the new recommendations to, to bed in and to, to take a, a point to review them. Yeah, so we'll do that. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah, uh, And finally, Councillor James. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. On agenda item four, Chair, I, I moved the recommendation and I don't think it was seconded. Yeah, that, 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 my understanding is that's okay because we're not, uh, we're not, yeah, we're, we're not, that's uh, fine. yeah, but thanks to the point though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that concludes all the questions on this agenda item, unless anyone has a, has anything else they would wish to add. I've not seen any questions from the floor. So I think, I think that's, that's it. That concludes the meeting. Thank you all for your participation as always. And um, I'm sure if you've, if you've uh, volunteered for the the working group um we'll, you'll be notified if you haven't volunteered and you do want to to take part please uh email myself or rachel and and uh, i'll put you we'll put you forward uh so yeah great have, have a, a, a great rest of your day and thank you for your attendance thank you chair thank, thank you chair. Yeah, bye bye thanks thank chair thank you chair bye all